if ever there was a match made in heaven, it's this one right here. SQ4D, number one 3D printed technology in the world, handsome home buyer, and we have come together to create our child, 42 Dean Street, the largest completed 3D printed house in the United States of America, 2,000 square feet, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and unlike any other 3D printed house in America, we 3D printed the forms, the footings, the foundation, the interior walls, the exterior walls. What you're about to see is gonna blow your mind. Straight out of the Jetsons, it's not the future, it's today, it's here to stay, and it is gonna revolutionize the housing industry. So come with me as we showcase everything we've been working on. I think you're gonna be very impressed. We'd love to hear your feedback. Come with me. All right, so. It might be cold in New York, but the real estate market is hot. Obviously, handsome home buyer. We do all different kinds of projects, but today is very special. Today is very different because today's episode, we have two, not one, but two 3D printed homes on tap. We're going to see 42 Dean Street, which is the first legally 3D printed home in New York and most parts of the country to be listed for sale, speculatively built and listed for sale. We're going to have the open house this weekend. It is unquestionably going to be madness. And I'm really excited to see how the public feels about our four bedroom, two bathrooms of 3D printed perfection. We have no idea what's going to happen. People could love it, bid it up crazy. Hopefully it'll make some money. I have high hopes. I think it's the coolest thing I've ever seen, not because I built it, because I think it's really cool. Let's talk 3D printing. I'm Charles Weirob, AKA The Handsome Home Buyer, and welcome to the house of today. 42 Dean Street in Atlanta, New York. We have industrial chic meets suburban America. I love what we've done here. 9,000 PSI concrete. This house is indestructible. As you can see, this is the way the 3D printer works. Now, a lot of people can't really understand exactly how the 3D printer works, but essentially it's a gantry style setup was essentially a little 3D printer that prints figurines, cases, anything out of plastic. Imagine that on a mass scale, layering concrete instead of plastic. This is exactly what it looks like. The head goes around layer by layer every seven minutes, stacking up a new layer, they dry right on top of each other. 40 print hours later, you have forms, footings, foundation, interior, and exterior wall. We have a roof truss system which we pop up top. You run the electric inside the slab. So if you see here, you have your standard electrical outlets. There's a lot of common questions. One of the common questions is, how do you get the electric? Well, before we 3D print the concrete slab, we run conduit in the floor, it pops up here, and then we 3D print around it. This wall is actually hollow. It's one bead on one side, one bead on the other, and a five inch void in the middle where the conduit comes up and we utilize that space for spray foam insulation, electric, and plumbing. We have the floors, which are polished to perfection, indestructible, gives it a very cool, unique look. And the rest, for all intents and purposes, is just an average, ordinary ranch like any other. Only yours is 3D printed and built to last. Over there is the living room. Right here, we're in the dining room. Perfect space. Transition into the kitchen. Beautiful waterfall island. Microwave drawer in the middle. Nice L shape. Perfect entertaining space. You're cooking. You're having a good time. You're talking to your guests there. You're talking to your guests there. Got the lights dropping down from the ceiling nine foot ceilings, makes the space seem even more grandiose. Behind the garage, we have the mudroom. Come check it out. Large mudroom and utility area. We have the washer dryer, tiled floor, drain in the floor just in case there's an accident because Sometimes there's accidents, right? Hot water heater, all the mechanicals for the plumbing, leads you right into the garage. You walk back out into your main open living space. Now we're gonna check out the bedrooms. I absolutely love the versatility of the 3D printed machine. If you can dream it, it can print it. As you can see right here, we have the rounded walls. Try taking a two by four and rounding it. Virtually impossible, but we can print anything you'd like. The texture, I absolutely love. I love the difference in texture between the walls, the smoothness of the floor, the smoothness of the ceiling, and it just makes for a very, 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 very cool look. So come with me, we're in the main bathroom. printed obviously like the rest of the house we have the double vanity with the polished concrete floors all the texture on the walls that's offset by the mirrors by the big moldings that go around the doors by the smooth tile just a lot of texture very funky ultra modern and built to last bedrooms standard size bedroom plenty of room 3d printed closets got a lot of texture on the walls floors look great big 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 windows tons of natural light and if you listen you can't hear a thing. Outside is a relatively busy street, but you can't hear anything inside your 3D printed house because this thing is built 
like a bomb shelter. Bringing to the master, two big windows, tons of natural light, large three printed closet, and your master ensuite. Walk down this little hallway into artistic perfection. Nice size vanity, again, the floors, lots of texture, nine foot ceilings, nine foot glass, love the tile combination, just absolutely fantastic. This house is an electric house, so it's an electric heat pump system, electric hot water heater, and with those solar panels perfectly positioned on the roof, you're basically living for free. Our most frequently asked question, how do you hang anything on the walls? Now, a lot of people think because this is concrete, it's gonna be difficult. This is a Portland sand and water mixture. Very simple, you can make it at Home Depot, it's inexpensive, and that's ultimately how we do this and how it's so easy. The best part is, it's super strong, but if you just take a drill, zip right into it, because there's no rock or aggregate there, so it's simple just to zip in, easy peasy, hang whatever you need to. Shelves, pictures, not a problem. How do you run electric into a 3D printed house? Well, prior to 3D printing the concrete slab, we run conduit, which essentially what conduit is, is it's a tube. It's a hollow tube that we run throughout the entire house. It comes up here, we have a little stub up that stops here, and then we 3D print the foundation on top of it, and then we 3D print the walls around it. And when we get to certain heights like this, we cut it out, put it in the box, and everything connects. Once it's all connected, we run the wires through. This way, if there's ever an issue, it's easy to just snake one wire out, put another wire in. So how do you run the plumbing in a 3D printed house? Just like any other traditional slab on grade construction, the plumbing is run prior to the slab being poured. So originally we do the undergrounds, lay in all the plumbing, comes up and we 3D print around it. We make sure that everything is exactly where it needs to be. This way the machine can navigate around and essentially 3D print right around where the drains and the domestic water is coming in. Do the walls in a 3D printed house get dusty as a result of these ridges? The answer is not at all. There is texture here. However, the ledges isn't significant. Any dust just falls to the floor. We're headed over to Nisconset, the wonderful people of the town of Smithtown have given us permission to 3D print a luxury Hampton style home. It's gonna be 2,500 square feet. It's gonna have 14 foot ceilings on one side, nine foot ceilings on the other side, cool rounded edges on an acre of property. Very, 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 very cool. If this thing doesn't end up in Architectural Digest, I don't know what will. So we're gonna meet the team of SQ4D over there right now. We're gonna go over the plans. We have our landscaper over there because it's completely covered in trees. We have to carve out a nice little, little nook for it. You're gonna see the plans, see what we're gonna do, meet the team, check out the site, and be following us on this adventure of building pretty much the first super high-end 3D printed house. So here we are, we're on site. Got Jose, our tree removal gentleman. This place is completely wooded, covered in trees, adjacent to a main road. So the goal here is to leave a buffer of trees along the main road and then put the 3D printed house in the middle, kind of like a little little 3D printed oasis. On top of the fact that these things are built like brick shit houses. So when you're inside them, a bomb could go off next door. You don't hear anything. So it's perfect for this location. Let's go out and uh, see what we can see. You got a paraquin jacket. Nice. Thanks. Where'd all these friggin' trees come from? Somebody dump them here? Why we only built 3D printed houses next to the busiest freaking roads? Gotta bring the camera everywhere. Got, gotta do everywhere. it. Dude, we're, we're, up, we're, make, we're making history here. Yeah, we're the hard <laughs> 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 Yo, it is fucking loud as shit here. Good to see you. What's going on? This is obviously, we got trees everywhere, which is good. Why don't we do a berm. Why don't we do a berm across the whole side? Let's take all this stuff. Let's push this on the leading edge of the property. And then idea. we'll put dirt over it. So what happens is the sound hits the berm and shoots up. You make it on an angle. Yeah. That's a good so idea. It brings it up and it brings yeah. it over the house instead of at the house. That's a really good idea. This is why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see where the property yeah. line is. That's the property line where that fence is. Oh yeah, because you know this what it, cut, redone. it this cuts. It cuts just redone. It cuts right through the middle, so we don't know. So it, it probably cuts like right around here. Yeah, probably. I want to just figure out the property line. 
probably this. It's like right, right here. it's like right here, and it goes straight, probably straight through to like yeah, that tree. Where the mark is. All right, so that's cool. So we could even leave these trees here. Yeah. So leave these trees here to block. Do you want to take out that one on the fence or leave that one? That's a 50 footer. No, I'll leave it. That's a 50 footer. Yeah, I'll leave it. <laughs> so all this brush. Next one's dead. I would take that one out. Take that one out. Yeah, yeah. take that one out. This. Yeah. Both. Yeah, you're gonna have to take. You gotta take this one too. You gotta take this one. 100. percent That's fucking. That's in a house. See this tree that's down. Let's take that tree, this tree, and then all this stuff, all this. All this. Yo, look at that thing shaking. Yeah, it's dead. When we dig this out, when we scrape this, oh, buried on top in the same day, so it looks like a nice berm sitting around the property. That's a good idea. How far back are we going with this? I would berm it all the way back past the house. Okay. Who bought this fucking piece of shit? I gotta tell you, this is beautiful. This is like a little, little fucking oasis. Yeah, all of this stuff past this one, this is where we're gonna build the berm. We have to get rid of anything. Fucking yeah. cut it up enough we can bury it yeah. and put it yeah. underneath. Yeah. That's a good idea. Ingenuity. So we're on site. Obviously, we have a busy road there. So Enzo over there came up with a brilliant idea to take everything that we cut down, shred it, move it over, and turn it into a berm and then bury it. So essentially what that does is organic material that acts as a natural sound barrier. This way, when the cars drive by, sound hits the berm, shoots up over the house so the people that are in the house, on top of the fact that it's a bomb shelter, don't hear anything. Always thinking.